Okay, so a consequence of Markov's inequality is another well-known inequality in probability called Chebyshev's inequality. So remember that Markov's inequality for a non-negative random variable told us that the probability of the extreme values, the high, the big values of a random variable can't be too, can't, you know, has some relationship to the expectation. So an example of this would be, so let's say we have X bigger than or equal to zero um, and the expectation of X is equal to 10. And we're interested in the value of C equals a hundred. Well, then what's the, then the, we know that the probability that X is bigger than or equal to hundred cannot be bigger than in this case, expectation of X 10 divided by a hundred. So it can't be bigger than 10%. Now, in many cases in this, in this situation, it actually would be much, much smaller than 10%. The fact that this holds, this relationship holds for, uh, for all such random variables X having this expectation um, is a bit too general for most applications. But we do know that if the expectation of a random variable, of a non-negative random variable is small, then the extreme probability values, you know, it can't take an extreme probability value with very high probability. So that's the idea between behind Markov's inequality. Chebyshev's inequality is actually just an application of Markov's inequality in, 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 as it turns out, but it has um, an important interpretation, especially in the context of statistics. So let's suppose now um, that X is any random variable. And specifically that it has a finite mean mu, we'll write it as mu, and a standard deviation which we will call sigma, which is positive. We're gonna let C be a positive real number. And then we're gonna consider the possibility the probability that X is more than C standard deviations from its mean. Right, so this is saying, oh, I'm sorry. No, just that X is um, more than C away from the mean, not, not C standard deviations, just C away from the mean. So you're, as we just, we've talked about before, one intuition for the mean is as the center of the distribution in some sense. So if X is centered on the value 100, um, what's the probability that X is more than C away from 100? That's all it's saying. So um, think about it this way. If this is the mean of X and this is how it's distributed and I purposely try to make the uh, distribution not very regular because I don't want, we don't want to assume that X is kind of well-behaved in the sense that we typically assume. But then I want to say, okay, this is mu minus C, this is mu plus C. Um, what is the probability What are some limits to the probability of these tail events here outside the realm of, uh, outside of, with of C of of mu? Well, remember what we did up here in this in this application of Markov's inequality is we said well, 
in the, if if we have non-negative random variables and non and we, if we have non-negativity on both sides and we raise to a power we don't we don't disrupt that relationship um and so the pro this probability that x is bigger than equal to c is 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 actually equal to the probability that x to the n is equal to is bigger than equal to c to the n well, in this case, we actually do have also, again, a, a non-negative random variable in this absolute value. So even though X does not have to be non-negative here, when we take the absolute value, that's a function of the random variable, which is non-negative, right? A function of random variable is a random variable. So this is a non-negative random variable. And so we can take powers on either side and the power that I'm gonna to choose to take is I'm gonna to choose to square both sides. So if I square both sides, now I can apply Markov. And Markov's inequality says this is less than or equal to one over the constant, I'm sorry, it's okay. One over the constant times the expectation of the random variable. Well, the random, the constant is C squared now and the random variable is x minus mu squared. It's absolute value of x minus mu squared, but absolute value squared is the same as just the random variable squared. Well, what's the expectation of x minus mu squared? That's the definition of variance, right? So it's the standard deviation squared of just the variance divided by c squared. So now, so that's Chebyshev's inequality. And a specific application of Chebyshev's inequality then is that if I take an integer value, k to be some positive integer, and then I say, okay, let's ask, what's the probability that x minus mu is bigger than or equal to k times sigma? Sigma being the standard deviation. So now what I'm asking is, What's the probability that X deviates from its mean by more than K standard deviations? Well, I can just apply Chebyshev's inequality. One over C squared, C is K times Sigma. So it's one over K times Sigma squared times sigma squared, which is the variance. The sigma squareds cancel and I get one over k squared. So what does this tell me then is that, um, let me just create a little bit of a table here. So probability that any generic random variable deviates from its mean by two standard deviations is at most one, one fourth by three standard deviations at most one ninth, four is at most one sixteenth, five is at most one over 25. Now in general, again, these are very high upper bounds because these apply generically to any random variable with a given mean and standard deviation and any distribution. Um, so a lot of the distributions we see will have will will have value probability values much, much, much less than this, and one in particular being the normal distribution. So this is not a very practical upper bound for use in practice. It's more something that can be used in theory to prove further properties of random variables. But it is something that holds for all random variables. And the premise is that um, the takeaway point is that it is unlikely for a random variable X to take a value far away from its mean, or in particular, several standard deviations from its mean. Uh, further, further consequence just to record here 
is that there is a quality in Chebyshev. So we get equality to hold in Chebyshev. If and only if. X takes three values. So it can only equal mu minus C, mu or mu plus C, such that it's symmetric. So the probability that X is equal to mu minus C is equal to the, the probability that X is equal to mu plus C. Okay, so those are Markov's and Chebyshev's inequality. And as we'll see in the next example, we'll talk about how this, this actually can and is used commonly in estimating success probabilities, particularly in polling. And we'll see that next.